Number 11. What is the converse of the statement? If x equals 1, then x plus 3 is equal to 4. Take a look. Which of A, B, C, or D do you think is the correct answer? Look carefully. So converse. So let's discuss this one. When we speak about the converse, it is in fact the conclusion becomes the premise. I mean, the conclusion becomes the hypothesis and the hypothesis becomes your conclusion right now. So from here, as what I mentioned last time, if x equals 1, this is your premise or your hypothesis in some uh, books. This is your conclusion or your then part. So they will just switch. Hence, the converse here is in fact, if x plus 3 equals 4, then x equals 1. Letter B is what you call the inverse. That is, given the conditional, you are just going to express them in their negative form. So you will take the negation of the if part and also the negation of the then part. That's why the equals became not equal to. If x is not equal to 1, then x plus 3 is not equal to 4. This is your inverse of the given conditional. And when we the letter C is in fact the contrapositive of the given conditional. When we speak about the contrapositive, it's the converse of your inverse. So you could see if I have here the inverse, just take the converse of it, then you will have the contrapositive. And lastly, the letter D is your given conditional. Letter A is the correct answer here. Number 12. What test is used to determine if a graph is that of a function? Is it the vertical line test, the horizontal line test, diagonal line test, or straight line test? And the correct answer here is, I believe you are very familiar with this, your vertical line test. That is, if you draw a vertical line on any portion of the graph, and if that vertical line intersects the graph at, at most one point, then therefore, that is a graph of a function. But if not, if it intersected the graph in two or more points, then it is the graph of a relation which is not a function. The horizontal line test is used to determine if a function is one-to-one -one or not. If it intersects the graph, if a horizontal line intersects the graph in at most one point, then it is the graph of a one-to-one -one function. Letter C and letter D are not tests to determine if it is a function. Letter A is the correct answer. Number 13. How many sides does a dodecagon have? Is it 10, 11, 12, or 13? We have to remember that decagon has 10 sides. 11, a polygon with 11 sides is what we call undecagon. Other books call it hendecagon. The correct answer here is 12. A dodecagon has 12 sides, whereas a 13 uh, 13 uh, sided polygon is a tridecagon. Letter C. Number 14. What is the probability of selecting a prime number from 10, 11, 12, until 30? So, from this set of natural numbers from 10 until 30, we have to determine first how many primes are there. But did you answer two sevens, three sevens, four sevens, or five sevens? So the shortcut, if we are talking about a consecutive number sequence or a sequence of consecutive integers, 
the shortcut to determine how many there are is you subtract the largest by the smallest plus one. That's the shortcut. So you have 30 minus 10 plus one, that's 21. So there are 21 numbers in that given set. The primes in this set are 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Remember that prime numbers are natural numbers that have exactly two distinct positive factors, one and itself. And these are the six primes. And since there are six out of 21 numbers in that set, then the probability of picking a prime number is 6 over 21, but dividing both by their GCF, which is 3, you get two sevens, letter A. Okay, number 15. What is the sum of the interior angles in degrees of a 15 gun? Is it 1,980, 2,160, 2,340, or 2,520 degrees? What do you think? We have to remember that the formula for the sum of the interior angles of any convex polygon is 180 degrees times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides it has. Since you have a 15-sided polygon, we will replace n with 15. So from here, 15 minus 2 is 13. So you have 180 degrees times 13, which is 2,340 degrees, letter C. Okay, number 16. A square has a side of 4x minus 7 centimeters. Which of the following expressions represent the area of a square? It's understood that the area is in centimeters squared. So which of A, B, C, or D do you think is correct? So remember that the area of a square could be found by squaring its side, right? So area equals side squared, or S times S. So we have the side as 4x minus 7. So in squaring that, remember, um, in squaring a binomial, all we have to do is first you square the first term, so 4x quantity squared. And since it's uh, minus here, uh, plus rather, we found some errors or some things that needs to be corrected along the way, and add twice the product of the first and the second term. So we have plus 2 times 4x times negative 7 plus the square of your last term, which is negative 7. So if you square 4x, you that will give you 16x squared. 2 times 4x is 8x. 8x times negative 7 is negative 56x. Then plus the square of negative 7, which is 49. And this is now your simplified answer, your answer, which is letter D. I hope you got it. 17. What is the value of the logarithm of 32 base 2? Is it 3, 4, 5, or 16? What do you think? So from here, let's say we don't know the value of this expression. So we represent the logarithm of 32 base 2 as x. And remember, if we write this in exponential form, this 2 here which is in subscript, is in fact the base. And this x here is in fact your the exponent of your base. So we have 2 raised to x equals this value, which is 32. So we have 2 raised to x equals 32. 
but we know that 32 could also be expressed as a base 2, uh, as 2 to the fifth. That's why we have 2 raised to x equals 2 raised to 5. And remember, since we have two expressions having uh, the same base and they are equal, then we could also say that their exponents are also equal. Hence, the value of x is 5, letter C. Number 18. Which of the following is a simplified form of square root of 27 minus square root of 48 plus square root of 75? Is it negative 4 square root of 3, 4 square root of 3, 8 square root of 3, or 12 square root of 3? From here, we could see that 27, 48, and 75 are not perfect squares. However, they have perfect square factors. The large uh, For 27, it's 9 times... The largest perfect square is 9. So 27 is expressed as 9 times 3. 48, that's 16. So we have 16 times 3. For 75, its largest perfect square factor is 25. So I express 25. I mean 75 as 25 times 3. And since 9, 16, and 25 are perfect squares, so we could extract their roots. So we have here 3 square root of 3. Here, 16 square root is 4. 3 is not a perfect square, so it should be an, uh, your radicand still. The square root of 25 is 5, so we have here 5 square root of 3 as a simplified value. And if you could see, they are all similar radicals because the radical part is the same, which is square root of 3. So to do that, just uh, combine their whole number parts here in the front. We have 3 minus 4, that's negative 1, negative 1 plus 5, that's 4. And simply attach the square root of 3. Hence, letter B is the correct answer. 19. How many one unit square squares can be cut from a 4 by 5 rectangle? Is it 9, 18, 20, or 25? This is pretty straightforward. Equivalently, the problem is asking of the area of the rectangle. Uh, because area, it's actually asking you of the number of square units. So we have 4 times 5. That gives you... 20 one unit squared squares. Letter C. 20. Which of the following lines has a graph that rises to the right? Is it x plus y equals 3? Negative 2y equals x plus 5? Negative 2x minus y equals 7? Or 3x minus 2y equals 10? There are many ways of answering this question. And uh, one way is to express or is to determine their uh, slopes. Or in, I, in my case, what I will be doing is that I will be expressing them all in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So, and remember that the graph of a line that rises to the right if the slope is positive. So we are looking for an equation here, a linear equation that has a positive slope. If you have letter A, x plus y equals three, in slope intercept form, the one on one side, it's y, the rest will be on the other side. So this is y equals negative x plus three. The slope here is the numerical coefficient of x. So here it's negative one. So I'm sure this does, not rise to the right. For letter B, dividing both sides by negative 2, you have y equals negative 1 half x minus 5 halves. Still, the slope is negative, so it's still falling to the right. For letter C, negative 2x minus y equals 7. If you simplify it, you arrive to y equals negative 2x minus 7. 
still the slope is negative. So this is falling to the right, not rising. And for letter B, for dog rather, 3x minus 2y equals 10. Expressing this in slope-intercept form gives you y equals 3 halves x minus 5. So you could see the slope here is positive. So I'm sure this is the required answer, D. I hope you got it.